you know, it's slightly a couple days removed from my last race, a 19 mile at the White Tank Mountains, <clears throat> big, big rugged mountains on the west side of Phoenix. Gonna give you a little play by play, kind of describe the course. So the first first uh, five miles of the course, five to six miles of this course are flatter or uh, slightly downhill and maybe a little rolling, it's not bad. And then there's a, a giant rugged, I'd say like three mile climb. Starts out kind of gradual and then gets steeper and steeper and uh, just rocky and not easy to navigate. <laughs> You're really happy when you reach the top. And then you got some, all of that climb is single track and pretty much the rest of the race is single track too. Really fun, neat trail to run. You're like up in the mountains, looking down on the trails down below. If you dare, because it's rocky. Don't want to look too much. It's beautiful though, beautiful. <clears throat> so yeah, uh, and then, then the trail goes down for about seven or eight miles. Rocky, single track, uh, winding along the side of these mountains. Really cool, really cool. And uh, then it flattens out after that eight mile descent. I think it's eight miles. It flattens out for two miles and then it's the finish. So yeah, the gun goes off and there's some very good guys in the race. <clears throat> and I'm kind of trailing off first and second. My friend Kyle and this other guy named Cordis, uh, breathing only through my nose for like the first four miles, breathing only through my nose. And then when it starts to get rolling, I uh, kind of rotate between breathing through my nose, <clears throat> breathing through my mouth, inhaling through my nose and exhaling through my mouth. Uh, so then the, the climb starts and they kind of start to pull away from me a little bit, even before the climb, I was always kind of trailing off them. <clears throat> so, uh, they're pulling away a little bit. I'm still feeling like I'm doing all right. I, I'm not falling back too too bad. But as I'm going, I hear two more guys coming up behind behind me, and one guy's kind of grunting and stuff as he runs. And it's kind of scary. I'm like, dang, this is... <clears throat> they're gonna catch me. It's not like they're going fast for going up this big hill. And one guy passes me. He passed me really easy. Uh, there was an opening, he got by. And then the second guy, he had a, he asked to go by me because the trail was narrow and not much room. So he went past me too and they just flew and they caught up the course and Kyle and went right past them too. <clears throat> so I'm going, I'm going. Eventually you get to the point where you start walking. <laughs> I saw Kyle up ahead and I saw him walking. So I'm like, okay, I can walk. <laughs> so you walk and then you start running and then you walk and run and you're just like sucking wind. <laughs> and you're not going fast and you're sucking wind. But I'm kind of used to it because uh, I kind of train like that. Uh, but I finally make it to the top and see those guys way in front of me. Even, even Kyle, the closest guy I was too, was seems st still pretty far in front. And the other guys I couldn't really even see almost, just like very briefly once in a while. So I'm like, dang, I'm in fifth place. I'm like, ugh, this is, uh, it's not good. But I start going and I'm doing all right. It's kind of rolling at first for the downhill. It's like up and down and I'm like, yeah, I'm feeling all right. I'm, I'm getting my legs back a little bit from uh, being all wonky from that huge climb. And then uh, then eventually it starts to go more downhill and I can, I can use the hill. I can run pretty good over rocks. Like I can just go straight over them. I don't go around them. You take like the straightest line and 
go straight over these rocks. You just kind of believe the next step is the right step, you know? <clears throat> so, uh, eventually I freaking catch back up to Kyle and this other guy, really buffed out, strong guy. He really did that climb. That was crazy. But, uh, I catch back, catch back up to him. I kind of have this long endurance. I can keep going. I'm not fast, but I can keep going. <laughs> I'm old, what can I say? <laughs> so I catch back up to him. I, I'm using the hill and going straight over these rocks. And I can tell, I watch people run, you know, like they can do it better. They're not going straight over the rocks like me. That's how I catch up, because if you go around the rock, it's kind of slowing you down. If you can just go straight over them, you're, you're taking the fastest, straightest path, and you're not losing your momentum. So I, I caught back up, and I, Kyle's like, oh, you want to pass me? Yeah, yeah, I'll pass. So I passed him up, and then I caught up to the beefcake guy, and I got stuck behind him a little bit, and eventually he let me by. <laughs> And that's, this is about like mile uh, 15, mile 15. I pass them by and then there was, there was an aid station. I think it's called Black Canyon Aid Station, last aid station. And I had brought this collapsible water bottle, uh, water cup with me, had in my pocket. And my plan was to stop at both these aid stations, get water, but I didn't stop at the first one. It's kind of off the path. So then I stopped at that one, but uh, he poured the water in there and I just got more like one gulp it like kind of all splashed all over but I got a little gulp <laughs> wasn't even worth stopping probably because I probably lost more time I probably would have made it just fine without taking a like, gulp of water I don't know it cost me maybe 10 seconds <laughs> and then the guy got back in front of me the guy had just passed so it was not it's just what I had in my mind that was my plan stop at that aid station but I I don't think it just stopped Probably cost me 10 seconds, maybe a little more. Getting stuck behind that guy again. <clears throat> so yeah, eventually I get by him and the, the trail opens up when you get down to the flatter part of it. I'm going pretty good down the hill, I'm feeling good, you know. And then it opens up and it goes a gradual uphill. And the monkey was kind of crawling on my back. I did that. It's the second to last mile, did it in seven minutes. Kind of hacked me off. <laughs> seven minutes. And the next mile is gradual downhill, and I'm like, just hold it together. Just try to keep my form good. You can't, can't really try too hard, you're just trying to hold it together. And the last, last mile did it in 6.15. And I, I was, when I was holding it together, I'm like, man, these guys are gonna fly fly by me but they didn't they didn't I held on for third place uh, about four minutes behind first they ran about 218 two of two of the guys ran like about 218 and i ran 222 low 222s so yeah it was a good race good way to end uh the drt race season save my best two races for last kind of raced my way into shape. I raced my way into shape. I may have won some of those races earlier in the season, but these were the best two. They, those other races set me up for these two. That's what I'm trying to say. Elephant Mountain and Mesquite Canyon. So, couldn't have, couldn't have asked for anything more. Couldn't have asked for anything more. Trained all summer long through the heat. Got off work at 3.30. Hard to go out when it's freaking 105. <laughs> 110. I would try to wait till uh, the sun was about to go down, like 6.30. But then uh, you're fighting to go to bed. I gotta get up at five. Get done running at like 7.30. 8 o'clock, got no time. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm trying to say, got no time. So, all right. Just had to tell you guys that.
Hope all you guys are having a great night. Adios.